This is the Collector Car Podcast, the home for the auto enthusiast. Join Greg Stanley as he applies over 25 years of insights and analytical experience to the collector car market. He will interview the experts and throw in some fun stuff as well. Coming up on this episode, we are talking about some incredible collector cars coming to the Keeneland Concorde de Elegance in Lexington, Kentucky. Now remember, the main sponsor of this episode is LLC TLC, a great place in which to get a huge discount on registering your tags. They have a ton of money. Be sure to check them out. They're great folks, and they will work on your behalf to save you money as you register your tags through the state of Montana. So you can check them out. And now off to the episode. Okay. All right, welcome to the Collector Car Podcast. I'm very excited today. I've got Tom Jones. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad you're on the program here because uh, obviously you're you're a half woman down. You don't have Connie with you today, correct? Right. <laughs> I was really hoping the to have of the both operation. Of you. Yeah, you guys are such a hoot, so much fun, so generous, so Thank giving, you. so positive. Uh, I was hoping to have both of you be on, but I'll take you, Tom. You, you're she's actually wor- she's actually uh, working. Uh, putting out sponsor packages uh, today. So she was unable to do that. She likes to get all that stuff done and take care of our sponsors and all that kind of stuff. So so uh, she says, you can do it. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, why I'll are we here? You. Well, we're talking about, you know, these incredible collector cars down around the Bourbon Trail for Keeneland Concord Elegance is coming up soon. One of my favorite shows, I've been coming the past few years, you guys are tremendous hosts. Thank you. And I uh, wanted to have you on to tell us a little bit about the Concord and what's going on. Well, it's our 20th year. I mean, that's under the heading oh. of Time Flies and You're Having Fun. Greg, it's our 20th year. And uh, it's amazing how time flies. Uh, we'll also probably hit about 99% positive that we will hit our $1 million mark for the uh, donations to the Kentucky Children's Hospital. Wow. Uh, so uh, we're really we're really geeked about that. We uh, are geeked about the group of cars that we have this year. We're also featuring fire trucks, uh, also featuring Cadillac. We have 1908 all the way up to the uh, Blackwing, which is a really cool. And also, please remember that Cadillac placed uh, third and fourth in uh, Le Mans this year. Yeah. So quite an accomplishment, you know, for again, you always kind of think of Cadillac as the uh, as the premier or, you know, very high-end type of luxury car and all that kind of stuff. But those guys are racers. Wow. Yeah, you know, they really are. And those are some really cool categories you just mentioned because I know a lot of different concourses, they're doing like, you know, the Porsche to the Corvette thing or whatever. Right. But you guys are working on a, something a little bit different. And I wanted to kind of go over the the layout of the land because Keeneland's such a cool horse park. I've been there for the races in October. It's right. just a ton of fun. And what I love about your Concor is it's just such a wonderful setting for a Concor, but then you also invite all the car clubs to fill in the outer area, right? It's a car show within a car show. And the other, you're right. If you could close your eyes and come up with the absolute perfect setting for a Concor, Keenly would have to be it. We have this wonderful show field in front of an old uh, stone barn that used to be the Keen barn when the place was originally a, a farm. And uh, after that, you have uh, a lot of space that we just call them paddocks because this is Kentucky. And so you you kind of, you know, try to put a horse twist on things or a bourbon twist on things. And ultimately, we have about, let's see, this year, I think it is probably 19 or 20 different car clubs, British Sterling, Corvette Club, Porsche Guys, all that kind of stuff that take over a whole area. And you don't have to be part of the club to park there but it's all kind of birds of a feather kind of thing you know oh wow you know look at all these porsches or look at all these corvettes or look at all these you know the brit cars and and the bmws and all that kind of stuff so it's really kind of neat it's a good thing for the clubs because they get to you know show show people what their club is all about and all that kind of stuff and and um so ultimately it's it's uh, a little bit more than cool cars on green grass we put out (laughs) about 300 park benches. Uh, there's a lot of trees around, so you can, you know, actually sit down. You can, you know, there's 10 uh, food trucks this year. And so you can uh, grab a nice meal, come out onto the field. And, you know, it's it's a beautiful sight out there, all those cars, you know, out there. So, uh, yeah, it's really great because the way I see it is you got the great, incredible invitation only cars in the center for the Concours. And mm-hmm. that alone is stunning. And I remember the first time I went to your show a number of years ago, 
I had a hard time getting into the Concord because I was looking at all the car club cars you know, <laughs> right. they're on the grass as well. And they're covered up by the shade of the trees, you know, slightly rolling hills there. It's just absolutely such a wonderful layout. It's almost like you're unencumbered by right. space. Thank you. I, I've, I've had comments before at two o'clock where I'll go out, you know, I always like to walk the field and say hello to everybody and all that kind of stuff. And it's like two o'clock and I'll say, so what did you think about the packet? Or he goes, I haven't made it to the show field yet. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. In the, in the paddock. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing I love about it is you have the artist gallery that's in the shaded area. You have some good bar. merchandise, you know, some swag there as, as well. Uh, yeah. Great food trucks out back. Um, right. It's just so much fun. And then on top of that, you have, I've never been to it, but you have the Maserati Mingle Friday yes. night, right? Just, well, we actually, we just had that uh, three weeks ago. Okay. That's kind of our kickoff to that. It was, it was the most attended that we've ever had. Uh, it's a, a, a place called Fritz Farm, which is really not a farm anymore. It's really a development, but it has all kinds of mixed usage in it, great restaurants, all that kind of stuff. And they kind of close a section of it down for us. And we had about 60 cars that wow. are all representative of cars that we have at the Concours. And uh, it's just, that's a, that's a great kickoff event. Um, and then starting on, uh, let's see, Thursday, we have the bourbon tour. We actually just had two more uh, seats open up on that in case anybody's interested. Uh, we have a wonderful, uh, unbelievable opportunity this year. As you know, we had discussed a little earlier that you know, the bourbon world is like on fire. Uh, they, they spent $2 billion uh, last year uh, in, in, uh, in that area, you know, different, uh, different uh, companies that are building uh, rick houses and uh, distilleries and all that kind of stuff. Well, through a connection of a connection, uh, a guy made it possible for us to buy uh, one of Heaven Hill's barrels this year. Mm. And that's kind of a fun deal because you do the tasting of the barrel and you, and you, and you, you know, maybe this one has a little bit more vanilla and maybe this one a little bit more walnut or, or whatever it is that, you know, and, and we all get to uh, get to pick which barrel we want in the democratic way, you know, and, you know, <laughs> most win, most votes win kind of deal. And uh, then it gets bottled and, and we get to, you know, you get to, uh, uh, buy a certain amount we're kind of limiting the amount so that one guy doesn't come in and buy it all because it is very difficult i mean almost impossible to get a barrel these days um and the the most fun part is that we get to name it now we oh. did this yeah yeah we did this like uh and make our own label and we did this two years ago at jim beams and i'll say this hopefully without getting censored um what would you expect out of a bunch of uh, old car guys uh, if they got to name their own bourbon? And so we came up with the uh, old rusty nuts, which we <laughs> thought was. <laughs> <I would've... laughs> so you can't buy that in stores. No, you can't. No, you <laughs> no. can't. So we have to come up with something for the, and we've done we've done that several times. Um, and again, I'm just so 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 fortunate or thankful uh, that we. Uh, are fortunate enough to get a barrel this year because that, that's a blast to do. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool and exciting. And if uh, if you're listening to this podcast and it's right when it's released, go to their website and get these last few passes because I really want to go on that tour. It seems like a tremendous tour to do. And you said it's coming up the Thursday before? Thursday before. The, okay. well, fr Friday's the the um, uh, celebration out of Spindletop. Saturday is the uh, is the actual concours. The date on that, just so I'm, I'm checking this to make absolutely certain because I don't want to steer anybody wrong. Uh, that would be the the 13th. The 13th. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coming up quick. 14th is the uh, at Spindle Top. 15th is the Concours. And then the tour is on the 16th. Now, what is the Spindle Top? Uh, Spindle Top's a really cool place. Spindle Top was uh, in the 20s. A woman came out from Texas who whose family owned the Spindle Top. Uh, oil uh, reserve in Texas there. And uh, she liked horses and all that kind of stuff. So she came and built a home in Lexington. And uh, I was educated as an architect. So I'm going to give a, a pretty close guess to the size of this place. My guess is that the home is probably, I don't know, 15,000 square feet or so. Wow. Okay. This was in the 20s. 
So, I mean, it really, truly was a spectacular, you know, federal architecture type residence. Um, the linen fold carvings from native oak in the ballroom are a thing of beauty. Uh, it's a really cool old home that was donated ultimately to the university and the university allows us to use it uh, for gatherings or not just us, but I mean, you know, it's, it's used, it's a restaurant and they put a pool in all that kind of stuff, but we get the whole thing for our uh, bash on, on Friday night. And so that's just a, uh, a celebration of 20 years of uh, service to, to the, to the car community, so to speak. And uh having the uh, Kentucky Children's Hospital as our benefactor and, and all that kind of stuff. We could spend hours, you know, laughing and, and, and in some cases crying about some of the things that happened on that. And they're all good things. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, a, a crying one would, would, would be a, uh, you know, we have a children's choice and the children's choice is actually picked by children who don't know how much a car costs. They don't know who owns it. Uh, they don't know what the manufacturer is. It's just in the eyes of a child, what, what is pleasing? What is really cool? And uh, a 56 Lincoln one year was picked. Oh, right. Uh, and, th and this guy, he opened, you can, to this day, you can open up the trunk and it's a shrine. It has the children's, oh. <laughs> uh, it has the children's award in there. It has all the books in there, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's like this, you know, mobile shrine that the guy has in the back of his trunk. Um we had a, we had a, another guy uh, that the the wife calls on a Wednesday and says, "I'm sorry, my husband has passed, mm. um, and we can't go." And it's like we're so sorry and all that. And then she calls on Thursday, says, "We're coming." It's like, okay, yeah, so they come. And uh, I can't tell the judges this. I can't tell the chief judge this. You know, don't want to bias anybody on on judging and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I go out and look at the cars. I was like, hmm, pretty well prepared as fate would have it. And by the grace of God, the guy and the family actually now wins. Wow. And the woman says his last words were, please go show the car at Keeneland. Wow. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is, you know, yeah. So it's just a, and again, for 20 years, we've had stories like this wow. that, you know, um, we've had junior judges that are now on the regular judges thing. One is a, one is an engineer uh, for, for General Motors. One is, I mean, so it's kind of fun to see these little guys that were, you know, 15 years ago or whatever. They were they were 10 years old and and now they've graduated from engineering school and they're going to work, you know, in the in the uh, car, you know, world and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's uh it's kind of fun to see 20 years in the rearview mirror. That's this. really cool. I would imagine that also applies to the cars quite a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We are having uh, Steve Plaster and Amy are uh, bringing the very first car that won. We uh, we actually have a kind of like a retrospect year of all the best of. And it's okay. not the best of. It's just cars that have won the best of. Best of show, uh, children's choice, junior uh, 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 judge's choice, uh, best in class and that type of stuff, just to show people what, you know, uh, they really are kind of the best of the best, right? I mean, but anyhow, so he's bringing the uh, Model J Duesenberg that won the very first. Wow. Years ago, Keeneland Concord. You know, part of the retrospect part of this whole event is is looking backwards for 20 years. And the very first guy, or one of the first guys that we had visit us was Don Garlitz, and he brought Swamp Rat. And, you know, talking about in, impacting young people's lives and all that kind of stuff. Well, Tom, uh, Don's lifelong uh, mechanic, uh, right right before the award ceremony kind of goes, hey, can we start this thing? And it's like, you know, that would be so cool. It might be the first and the last Keeneland Concours, but I think you should do that. So he gets the push truck because, you know, it has no starter. And they go down towards the clubhouse at Keeneland bump starting this thing and all of a sudden you hear this explosion of <laughs> you know of this big block whatever it is go off and it's like man what was that and so it, it turns around and comes back and pulls up right onto the uh awards area and there's this six or seven year old boy and he's got his hat on and all that kind of stuff and 
he's like looking, you know, he's, he's this tall. So he's looking right past the headers into Don Garlett's eyes. And Don <laughs> kind of looks over like this and blips the head, you know, blips the accelerator, blows his hat off because, you know, <laughs> and it's like the kid's eyes are like this big and all that kind of stuff. So I hope he turned into a car guy too. You know, how can he not in that situation? Yeah, exactly. So, what? uh, I do have an idea for you. I have never been to a Concorde where there's a fire truck class. So I want to hear about that. But, are, you know, do the sirens and the bells all at one time. And you know? and and we're bringing a Dalmatian. Oh, got to have yes. a Dalmatian. Yes. So, yes. You know, under the heading of just kind of always change it up for your audience. You know, one year we had the largest collection of gold cup boats ever assembled, either in water or not in water. Those guys started that also, that which was fantastic. He goes, got a hose? It's like, oh, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, please do. You know, it's a Scripps V12 and a Rolls-Royce V12 and a Packer V12 with exhaust about this long. I mean, ear splitting. It was marvelous. So anyhow, so yes, we will start all, you know, get all the sirens going and all that kind of stuff. But under the heading of, you know, this history of this thing called the automobile and the internal combustion motor, and, and uh, that's why we have carriages. Uh, a lot of people don't, you know, either know or whatever. The Studebaker actually made more Conestoga wagons than they ever made automobiles. Uh, Fleetwood, speaking of Cadillac, okay? I mean, there are a lot of companies that still exist to this day that, you know, imagine what that conversation was in the boardroom. Okay, we're making a, we're making a, thousands of conestoga wagons you want us to build a body for what yeah. what do you call it a car <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay and then and then somebody took the risk on that and said okay we'll build one or we'll build you know like fleetwood like i mean there's all these guys that were um premier coach and carriage builders that existed into the the 30s in some case the 40s of uh, that that really got their start when they were making you know these these things for horses and uh the instrument of the devil uh you know an automobile was just a glimmer in somebody's eyes and uh look how far we've come I, I i do remember i think jay leno has one it, it was one of the earliest fire trucks in basically it was hinged in the center and the back half was one of the old fire truck carriages, you know, instead of a oh, horse wow. up front, they added a two wheeled motor. It was a hybrid. Hybrid. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it was like one of the earliest ones that you just right. don't think about. These were carriages. Now they're sure. trucks yeah. and whatever, you know, part, so. part horse, part internal combustion motor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to see your fire trucks. That's truly amazing. We have we have some. There's an Aaron Fox that is coming that I'm told was. If it wasn't a seven figure, it was a very high six figure, <laughs> excuse me, restoration. Um, one of the best in the country. So I am I cannot wait to see that in the flesh. I've seen pictures, of course. And then several others that are, again, we kind of went from the uh, 30s up to about the 50s. After that, a lot of the stylistic things kind of went away in fire trucks and they, and they became very utilitarian. So, I mean, they're very boxy and all that kind of stuff. But you have a lot of, uh, of automotive slash design elements in fire trucks in, within that time period. You have a lot of Art Deco. You yeah. have a lot, of, a lot of chrome. You have all that kind of stuff that really uh, there was a designer involved. I mean, it wasn't just, you know, build a box, put a, put a door on it, and then everything else is a pump and all that kind of stuff. So it's really interesting. And we've arranged them in chronological order. So that you kind of see how they've evolved right. over the years. Yeah. yeah, and all the gold leaf is amazing. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yep. that's great. Fun stuff. So we now the Friday night event is that still uh, tickets available for? Yes, absolutely. That's out at Spindletop, and tickets are available on the website. Okay, and uh, it is a you know uh, sharply dressed. Let's put okay. It's okay. it's not casual, but it's it's a very elegant place and all that kind of stuff. We also believe, and I think we just got this confirmed last night, that be, because this was this house was built in the era of carriages, uh, the, the gal, that uh, Linda, that runs kind of the segment of carriages, we believe we're going to have 
a carriage out there that you can park your car and arrive at this estate in a carriage much as you would back in the you know back wow. in the 20s or whatever so it, it's a great way to make a grand entrance if you're you know i mean it's it's a uh and, and you got to remember <clears throat> hard hard to believe uh we we had the wells fargo stagecoach here one time with the wow. it's called six in hand so you have six reins of horses you know two and a two in hand would be two horses four in hand would be four etc well it was a big deal to go across the country in i think it was three and a half weeks or whatever it was and that was the quote-unquote learjet right. of its time right you wanted very you know you were inside you weren't out in the sun you, you weren't having the wind in your face i mean and, and and this is this was like the best there was, right? This was first class travel, <laughs> you know, right. in, in that time frame. So a lot of the cars, or a lot of cars, a lot of the carriages that we get, um, it's interesting to put your mind back to what what those things really were about back then, and that really it was it was the mode of transportation by everyone. It was either uh, for you know, uh, just getting around the farm or it was, uh, it was going out to, uh, they had horse races, of course, much, much like we have automobile races now, but I mean, that was the mode of, you know, mine's faster than yours. Okay. Let's go prove it. Right. Kind of deal. So, you know, there, there's, there's, you know, just, a, there's, uh, sporty ones. There's ones that were, for, you know, for the whole family and have your belongings and all that kind of stuff. So we, because it's horse country here, we really try to, uh, you know, show people that, and also the, the connection to uh, to auto automobiles. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. I love some of these concours that go out of the box a little bit and trying to find something that is not only historical, tells a history, but is also fun, brings in the next generation as well. So I love I that. Agree. That's a great segue, Greg. If you don't mind, I, yeah. For four, no, maybe this is the fifth year we've had a class called Fast and Furious. And um, it's it's really not fast and furious because that's probably copyrighted or whatever. But it's <laughs> but it's you know the it's the furious same. and fast, <laughs> yeah, crazy fast, crazy and, fast. Uh, so <clears throat> Friday night, like we did when we when I was a kid, anyhow, and and uh, we go to a place to go cruising or at least look at each other's cars and all that kind of stuff. Well, that still happens. And uh, four or five years ago, there were some. Uh, and I don't, there were some young people that were down at Main Street and they had all of their cars that, you know, they were um, uh, Nissans and they were Hondas and they were, you know, of that ilk of the Fast and Furious type automobiles with a thousand horsepower and gonzo turbos and lowered and, and you know, all the stuff that we did to uh we thought if you turn the air cleaner uh, cover upside down you were in any game yeah. two horse right that was like you know you were <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah but ultimately you know these guys we've had cars that they've imported from japan that they took apart and literally piece by piece had it brought into the country reassembled it and and it, it was out on the yard uh, you know on, on the field the concourse field and uh, the very first year that we had that uh, a dear dear friend of mine who's a ccca uh ex-president and all that kind of stuff classic car club of america is like what are those people doing here <laughs> it's like well do me a favor look over there and squint for just a minute and tell me what you see and uh, all the kids right he goes i don't know what i i don't get it i said that was you 40 years ago oh yeah years ago there's no difference. They're just as passionate about their cars as we were when, 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 when we were playing with cars, and as he was. I mean, he's a generation or two past me. Yeah. So there's that common thread. We're more similar. We're more alike than we are different. Yeah. And uh, and so if if you if you, I mean, one of the absolute most wonderful comments I've ever received uh, on the concourse field is we. The chief judge, uh, Kurt Richards, and I went over to welcome them to the Keeneland Concours and said, guys, if you look around a little bit, just so you know, this is the first time that I'm aware of that a uh, group of, 
you know, highly modified Japanese import cars, fast and furious type cars have ever been on a legitimate concourse field. It's groundbreaking. Yeah. And, uh, you know, controversial in some eyes. And, uh, and, and the best comment that I got out of that was one of the guys came over afterwards. He goes, mister, if I knew it was this nice, I would have dressed better. <laughs> <laughs> well, how cool to get that response out of, out of a, you know, a 20 year old or a 21 year old or whatever. It's like, ah, okay. We're wow. going past cars now. So yeah. it really is a cool thing. And I think they're, they're with us this year. Um, I think it's a blast to have them there. I think that, you know, they they share their passion and and went, and throughout the whole day you wind up with them talking to some of the guys with the CCCA cars and some of the guys with the yeah. muscle cars and all that kind of stuff. And they go, oh, you know, but I didn't know that a turbo was put on a car in like, you know, 19 oh, whatever it was, or that type of thing. And I mean, once they start talking, those barriers come down and it's mm. You know, my hope is that one of these days, a guy in one of those will, will, will give a thumb up, thumbs up to me and my Packard. <laughs> there you go. Right? I do remember last year that section of the field and there was a, I think it was a 300 ZX that was heavily modified, but it was so perfect. It was so well done. Like the quality craftsmanship on it was unbelievable. The passion is undeniable. Yeah. Right? It's and I, and I would argue even more technically complex to do some of very the, much so the very work much so yeah. every single one of those cars greg ha, ha, the guys have um laptops yeah that they talk to and play with and all that kind of stuff like i say we turned the air cleaner upside down and it made a better noise and all that kind of stuff and, and you might you might advance the timing a little bit but other right. than that, I mean, you know before yeah. you went really crazy and started pulling parts in and out but i mean these guys are on the fly a uh, very sophisticated bunch of electronics that, that make that thing run or, or, or in my case, not run. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's really great. So Fun stuff. the concourse Saturday and now I will say the, not the countryside tour. What do you call your tour on Sunday? It's the tour de elegance. Tour de elegance. Uh, yeah. That is and really well done because I do the you. countryside tour for the Cincinnati concourse. I'm like doing I think I do a good job, but I'm doing like Excel spreadsheets and stuff. And you guys have like this really nice pamphlet that's mapped out with illustrations. And <laughs> I was, I took it last year. I said, this is first in class right here. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, that was beautiful. So last year we ended up at a private luncheon in a barn, right? Yes. And that was yes. fantastic. And that, that was actually in the backside of, um, of Shaker Village. And Shaker Village is a still currently owned by the Shakers. I believe there's only one or two left, but it, by by the um, entity that is that, you know, uh, organization. And uh, I hope you enjoyed, you know, the history. Oh, yeah. That along with that. And that's kind of half the fun. But what we try to stress in everything that we do is sense of place, right? There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of very interesting stuff with horses and with bourbon and all that kind of stuff. So half the fun in, in uh, our corporate culture, uh, for lack of a better word, is sharing that with people. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's really kind of amazing. I, I, my day job is I uh, sell bearings. So I get to talk to people all over the world. And uh, I get ribbed every once in a while about, you know, barefoot and pregnant in Kentucky and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Usually my response is I send them a picture of where a lot of the horses live. <laughs> yes, yes. Very, very nice. <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> now, uh, so the actual Concord, if my listeners are going down just for that, is Saturday the 15th, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. I think it's available online at a discount and then available at the gate uh, if you if you you know, decide Friday night or Saturday morning, I'm, I'm, we're going to go to this. So in fact, I think you can still buy tickets online late Friday. Okay. Yeah. And the website is keenlandconcord.com. Yes. Um, so I appreciate you talking about the Keeneland Concord Elegance, but I want to know your passion for cars, specifically Maseratis, but just kind of a little one-on-one on Tom and Connie and passion for cars. Well, I appreciate that. You got 30 Connie's seconds. No, I'm just kidding. Three, okay, I'll make it real quick. The, Connie's is pretty straightforward. She's the baby of 13 with six brothers and six sisters. Wow. For Tom, she 
she followed the footsteps of the brother. So A, she's a better shot than I am by a long shot, no pun intended. Second, she can probably repair a car better than I can ever, because she reads the instructions. I just start doing this and she's going, <laughs> did you see this on page 14? Did you? <laughs> and it's like, no, but she always, she reads, whenever we get a, a, a car that's new to us, she'll read the manual. And now they're, now they're 500 right. page manuals. <laughs> right. Uh, and she's really good at doing leather re dyeing and all that kind of stuff. So she's fantastic. I'm a really blessed guy to, to be married to a gal that really loves cars. Tom's journey with this is I've always been, I'm an architect by education. Uh, so I've always had a, an eye towards line, uh, towards craftsmanship and that type of thing. And uh, I grew up in California, so in the in the epicenter of, I remember I remember seeing, you know, uh, the first um, Trans Am that didn't have, you know, the bird on the hood. It was a SD four fifty five. Yeah, I remember seeing the first Lotus uh, um, uh, Europa S two uh, before the uh, Cosworth or not the Cosworth, but the uh, uh, special version came out, the black one. Um, and all that kind of stuff. So my very earliest memories are uh, our car things. And uh, I and grew up, uh, let's see, maybe uh, 45 minutes away from Laguna Seca. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. To the north was, uh, what was the name of it then? It was up in Sonoma. And I think it was actually called Sonoma then. And then Riverside, which was down in Southern California. So my dad was a motorhead enough to take us to that. My scoutmaster was a guy named Howard Kading. Howard Kading, whose grandson uh, did tryouts for the Indy 500, raced at the San Jose Mile. Mm -hmm. So all of our scout meetings were at the San Jose Mile. So he raced, uh, they call them outlaws now, I guess we just called them hard tops then, but you know, probably 500 cubic inch motor, 800 horsepower, four wheels, a wing as big as the car, and a guy who was fearless that that drove the thing on dirt. Yeah, wow. and, uh, I'll never forget that sound. I'll never forget how much fun we had, you know, doing that. Uh, uh, and just really have always been very thankful for growing up in that environment. So uh, I'm sure that, my, and I don't have many mechanical skills at all, but I sure have a, an appetite and a desire to learn about things mechanical. I, I enjoy putzing on the cars that I have that, you know, this falls apart, blah, blah, blah. I've got a dear friend that helps me with that. And, and uh, I call him the Pope because he's <laughs> blesses things and they work. Um, but I just, you know, I, I, you know, some people are uh, drawn towards that kind of thing. And I know I am because of those things, because of, because of line, and because of because of the mechanical aspect of things. So where did the love for Maseratis come about? Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I a lot of things are not driven by what your desires are, but what falls in your lap. That's my so, love of Mustangs. <laughs> there you go. It's the point in case. So the the fact of the matter is probably. 35 years ago, 30 plus years ago, um, a friend of mine calls up and says, hey, um, give me 900 bucks for a Maserati parts car. And I'm thinking, ooh, that'd make a really cool, that's a parts car, take it apart. I'll make the motor into a coffee table, sell the wheels, I'll be even, life is good. So uh, this thing shows up a year later and it's a 4.9 SS Ghibli. Wow. Kind of a rare car. The problem is it has holes that you can put both fists through, through every body panel. Wow. There's this much sand in the bottom. The engine is frozen. Me being at that stage of the game, you know, the eternal optimist, which I am still, uh, I started taking it apart, cleaning everything, all that kind of stuff. And at some point, you get into a project where the little light bulb goes off and says, Oh, somebody's got to put this back together. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, I have a flaw, a logic flaw, right? So, I, I waited uh, for a guy that whose work I had seen um, uh, up in Cleve, Ohio, 
uh, and and uh, Pete Cochran is his name, and and he is just an absolute master of of uh, the skill set of putting a car back together, of paint, of bodywork, of electrical, of all that stuff. I mean, he's a, he's a Renaissance guy, um, and insanely humble. He would not take any of that as a compliment. He would just kind of you know bury his head, but he is unbelievably talented and uh over several years he put that car back together that's the one you still have yes sir oh my goodness yes and uh that was up at alt park uh two weeks ago yeah and uh won best of class by the way and um so uh, i love that car and i love when i was taking it apart it's like it has a um heat shield over the slave cylinder it would have, I mean, all these, again, to a detail guy, to a guy that loves putzing with mechanical things, it's like, wow, these guys were serious. Somebody, somebody spent, I mean, there's one guy on the floor in Maserati that, that beat out a little piece of um, aluminum and then built a little thing so that it would go over the slave cylinder so it wouldn't have heat buildup. Yeah. It tells me the, the amount of thought process that they put into it and the amount of craftsmanship. Yeah. You know? So uh that kind of started my love for those things um always wanted a, a ferrari also i mean to me they were stable mates um so uh fast forward to probably 10 years ago at least probably maybe a little longer than that um and a, and a buddy out in california jay uh that that uh, was a maserati fanatic and so I see in Hemmings one day a supercharged Maserati for sale. It's like, it's got to be Jay's. Mm-hmm. How many supercharged Maseratis are these? So I call up Jay. What do you, you know, this Tom Jones. Oh, hey, Tom, how you doing? You know, what's the deal? He says, well, you know, Barb, his wife, is kind of tired of it and stuck on the side of the road because the thing didn't <laughs> work. So it's time for me to get something a little more reliable, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I, so I said, I would be honored to have this car. And he said, well, there's more to the story as there with cars there usually is. And so Barb's car came with it. Another car, which is also a, a Q of 84 uh, QP3. So one was uh, um, uh, nitrous with a propane second stage. Yeah. And the other was supercharged with a line. Those are crazy. The stage rear end and, you know, just wonderful hot rod stuff. And um, so, uh, and then you get a parts car because if you have two of those, you need at least another one to keep them running. And so uh, that was part of the deal. And then, and then he had a Merrick SS that I didn't know that he had. And he says, we got to take that too. <laughs> so it's like, so I think I'm getting one car. I wind up with four cars. They're all Maseratis and they are delightful. I just, I, I was just working on the uh, black one on Jay's car. Uh, this weekend, uh, just changing out filters and all that kind of stuff. And they they make great noises. There's eight dead cows inside because there's so much <laughs> weather and all that kind of stuff. They're they're wonderful cars. I really enjoy them. That's awesome. They're great. Um, yes. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're a Maserati collector before you know. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much, Tom. I'm really looking forward to it. I was going to come down on Saturday, but now I might have to see if we can come down there on Friday and check out Friday night. and. Super. You know, stay till the tour on Sunday. So outstanding, that'd be fantastic. Well, Greg, I appreciate the uh, the, the always enjoy the time with you, and and uh, wish you the best on your travels coming up, and enjoy your enjoy your uh, trip out out west, and uh, say hello to the buffalo for me. Yeah, and, uh, and and we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes, and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.